Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. As you read in the title, today we're talking about Santa Claus and how we're going to make him work for our Montessori home. I'll go over the traditional view of Santa in a Montessori environment and how we're adapting that to work for our home where we really value the traditional and cultural aspect of Santa as well. Now as we enter December and the season of Vlogmas, I'm going to have more videos on this channel. Definitely nothing to the daily capacity, but probably two or three videos a week. I'm excited to experiment with other types of content as well, but Sundays will always be reserved for strictly Montessori videos. And the first few videos I've got lined up are going to delve deeper into this concept of pretend play, imaginative play, and creativity in the Montessori environment, so definitely be on the lookout for those. So what is the strictly Montessori view on Santa Claus? Well, Dr. Montessori didn't create a handbook for things like Santa, the Tooth Fairy, or the Easter Bunny, but what we do know is that she advocated for sticking with reality until the age of six, because until then, children do not have the ability to distinguish between fantasy and reality. Now the caveat with that is there's a lot of new research coming out indicating that children as early early as three may actually be understanding the difference between reality and fantasy. And obviously the Montessori method is also very deeply rooted in respecting the child and that extends to not lying to them. So if we take the traditional view of Santa Claus, which is something that is made up, it is fantasy, telling a child that Santa is in fact real when he is not is considered a lie and it is not very respectful to the child. And because we are presenting him at that age when they are not able to distinguish fantasy and reality, they really, really do believe that he is real. Now where things get even more complicated is some of the messaging that is sent along with Santa, at least over here in the US. Mainly the concept of nice kids get something from Santa and naughty kids don't get something from Santa. Meaning that there is such a thing as a nice kid and a bad kid. When in reality, all kids are inherently good and sometimes they make good decisions and bad decisions, just like adults do. And whether or not they get a present should not be rooted in the behavior that they were able or unable to control. So if we were to strictly stick with what Dr. Montessori believed, the concept of Santa does not really belong in a Montessori home. So if you equally find the concept of Santa to be problematic and you would rather completely avoid telling your child that Santa is real, then simply let them know that Santa is a game that some children choose to play and some do not. And you can leave that choice up to the child. Would they like to pretend that there is such a thing as Santa? Would they like to receive a Santa? A gift and you can make this as involved or as uninvolved as you would like. However, in keeping with Montessori and the concept of grace and courtesy and respecting others, I would encourage you to let your child know that while they chose not to play the Santa game, other children may have chosen to play the game of Santa and we should be respectful of both of their decisions. For our Montessori home personally, there are a lot of cultural traditions rooted in Santa, especially on my side of the family, that I still wanted to introduce to Stella while being respectful of her and not inherently lying to her. I think most of us will fall into one of two categories if we think back to how we felt when we found out that Santa isn't real. Some of us may have felt a lot of disbelief and disappointment and been really upset with the fact that the people that we admire the most, our parents or our caregivers, have been lying to us, while some of us still remembered the beauty and the magic that Santa brought and didn't really have a negative association with that moment of finding out that Santa is not real. I personally fall into that latter category and I I think it's because of how tactfully my parents chose to present Santa to me and I can't help but think that it has a lot to do with the fact that my mom has a master's in early childhood education so she really knows how to approach a child. And so I was never told that 100% Santa is real. Anytime I questioned or asked, my parents kind of bounced their question back to me. Well, what do you think? How do you think we can check? what do you want to think? And that really helped me feel in control of the entire situation. And there were times when I definitely was questioning and wondering if Santa is real or is not. But at the end of the day, I still wanted to believe that he is real. And so I chose to play that game by myself. Now, if you're new to my channel, I'm also from Belarus, meaning that a lot of the traditional beliefs that I had of Santa may be different either because of my family's personal beliefs or simply because of a completely different culture. Regardless, I think a lot of it ended up lining up with the way that a Montessori home could incorporate Santa into their lives. Primarily the biggest thing I know I will be incorporating is really keeping in touch of what Santa is supposed to represent. The story of Santa Claus is actually the story of giving making and giving and sharing with others who have less than us. Now, whether or not you choose to present St. Nicholas himself as a real person or not would be more in line with your religious beliefs. However, it is not far-fetched to say that there are people like that out there in this world, some very famous people and some less famous people who have given to others throughout their life. And so that is what I'm choosing to focus on when I'm presenting Santa to Stella 
He's the symbol of giving. And that's what I remember the most about Santa. Somebody who used to give to us. We didn't go to the mall to take a picture with Santa Claus. We actually used to have somebody come to our preschool or our school. And we would have an entire day that was dedicated to having a festival where we would sing and dance and play games. And that Santa used to participate with us. And at the end, he would give each and every child a toy. And it was never the concept of only good kids get toys and the bad kids don't get toys. Nobody ever threatened us like this throughout the day or throughout the days leading up to this festival. It was simply, Santa is here to give. Now the person dressing up as Santa was typically somebody's dad and the child whose dad it was typically was too excited to keep quiet about it and we all knew whose dad it was. But that didn't take away from the magic. It also presented a wonderful opportunity for our parents to have that discussion with us. I very distinctly remember my parents telling me that all the Santas we see outside are helpers. They're people who also want to give. And so all these other people are coming together to help give to all the other people in the world. Another thing that we did once we came to the States is we would donate to Toys for Tots. So I got to be the Santa. While I still wanted to believe as a child that there's definitely one person out there who is magical and rides a sleigh with all these reindeer and is able to somehow get all of my favorite presents to me under the tree. I also knew that there was some kind of magic in people just coming together and giving and being joyful, respecting each other and trying to make each other's wishes come true to the best of their human abilities. So once that magic of the actual Santa faded away, the magic of humanity stayed behind and that was enough for me. So personally, I think that presenting Santa as simply a symbol of giving and helping others doesn't make him alive, simply makes him a symbol, somebody that stands for something better. And the more we involve the child in being a part of that, the more they can feel that actual joy from the act of helping and giving and less worry about whether or not there is a Santa sitting somewhere in the North Pole. And so I encourage you this holiday season not to get too caught up in the logistics of what Santa is and is not in a Montessori home and simply follow what fits with your cultural and traditional beliefs in a way that fully respects your child and allows them to still take part in a tradition of giving and helping others. And until next time, I hope you stay safe.